Over the years we have performed various services for hospitals and other healthcare facilities. During those years we have observed various NFPA code violations. We feel it would be helpful to publish the top 10 code violations that we frequently see. We'll state the violation, then cite the NFPA code that is in violation, and finally explain how to solve the problem. The code references are to NFPA 99 Healthcare, Facilities Code 2012 Edition Electrical Systems and to NFPA 70 National Electric Code 2017 Edition. Number 10. Using old ground detectors and in isolated power panels today. Code 6.3.2.2.8.2.1 Special protection for wet procedure locations shall be provided by power distribution system that inherently limits the possible ground fault current due to a first fault to a low value without interrupting the power supply. Solution Change all ground detectors over to Lion Isolation monitors to meet the present code. The LIM has a digital meter displaying the hazard current. The old ground detectors had to trip at 2 mA, and today a LIM has a threshold trip of 5 mA and not at 3.7 mA. This cuts down nuisance alarms. The old ground detector measured an imbalance between each leg, which is not an accurate reading of the hazard current. Number 9. Using the room when the line isolation monitor is defective. Code 6.3.2.6.3.1. Each isolated power system shall be provided with an approved, continually operating line isolation monitor that indicates possible leakage or fault currents from either isolated conductor to ground. Solution. If the line isolation monitor is in alarm or is not operating per NFPA 996.3.2.6.3.2, the room must be shut down until the limb is replaced and tested per NFPA 996.3.3.3.2. If the limb goes into an alarm during a procedure, once the procedure is completed and the patient is out of the room, the room is to be shut down until the problem is repaired. See what to do in case of alarm on our web page. Number 8. Using GFCI receptacles on isolated power systems. The GFCI will not trip per definition because there is no neutral on isolated power. GFCI hospital grade is very expensive and is not needed nor work on isolated power. Code 3.3.66 under definitions it says GFCI NFPA 993.3.66 is a device intended for protection to de-energize a circuit when a current to ground exceeds the values established for a Class A device. Solution. Do an inspection of areas where isolated power is installed and if any GFCI are found on isolated power, replace with hospital-grade duplex receptacles. Number 7. Using isolated ground receptacles in patient areas. I have found the isolated ground receptacles in patient care areas. Some say the system is on isolated power, so they used isolated ground receptacles. However, the primary protection for a patient is the ground going back to the reference ground bus whether on grounded power or isolated power. On isolated power the line isolation monitor is monitoring any path going to ground. If equipment is plugged into a receptacle that is not referenced to earth ground the limb will not be able to monitor any fault that may potentially be going to ground. Code 6.3.2.2.7.1b An isolated ground receptacle shall not be installed within a patient care vicinity. Solution Do a quick inspection of all patient care areas looking for isolated ground receptacles. They are orange in color or have an orange triangle symbol on its face. Make note of location and change ASAP. Notify all maintenance that they are not to be installed in patient care areas. Number 6 Line isolation monitors, limb, are not being tested correctly. This is becoming a more frequent violation due to two different types of limbs and the testing required for each type. The older limbs are called analog type limb, they do not test their alarm circuitry automatically. To verify the limb will respond to a fault you must push its self-test switch monthly per NFPA 99. 
the newer limbs test their cells daily by an enteral program. If they fail their daily testing, they will audibly and visually alarm with a failure code on the LIM display. Code 6.3.4.1.4 The limb circuit shall be tested at intervals of not more than one month by actuating the limb test switch. For a limb circuit with automated self-test and self-calibration capabilities, this test shall be performed at intervals of not more than 12 months. Here is where the problem is. Many feel this is the only testing that needs to be done, but that is not true. NFPA 99 3.397 Line Isolation Monitor states the LM is a test instrument. That means it must undergo a yearly test to verify it is working correctly. NFPA 99 6.3.2.6.3 covers several requirements that the LIM must respond to, such as NFPA 99, 6.3.2.6.3.2, .6 describes the operation of the lights and the alarm threshold values. The LAM must alarm at 5 milliamps but not at 3.7 milliamps. So there is a monthly test for the old analog limbs and both limbs must undergo the annual testing along with the self-test operation by activating its self-test switch. Solution. Verify all line isolation monitors are being tested correctly by reviewing the maintenance logbook per NFPA 996.3.4.2 record keeping. If you do not have a maintenance logbook isolated power specialist can help you start one. Text or email me a picture of your line isolation monitor and I can tell you what test you are required to do. Number 5. Wet Procedure Locations There seems to be a misunderstanding of when isolated power is required, when Class A GFCI are required and when grounded power is acceptable. Code 6.3.2.2.8.1 Wet procedure locations shall be provided with special protection against electric shock. Code 6.3.2.2.8.2 states special protection shall be as follows. Power can be isolated power when interrupting the power is not tolerable. Class A GFCI are acceptable if interrupting power is tolerable. Solution. NFPA 996.3.2.2.8.4 states operating rooms shall be considered to be a wet procedure location, unless a risk assessment conducted by the healthcare governing body determines otherwise. NFPA 996.3.2.2.8.4 states if the risk assessment conducted by the healthcare facilities governing body, as defined in Chapter 3, determines that the operating room is not a wet procedure location, then the special protection of NFPA 996.3.2.2.8.5 shall not be required. That means standard hospital-grade duplex receptacles on grounded power is acceptable. However, NFPA 99A 6.3.2.2.8.4 states that when conducting the risk assessment, the healthcare governing body should consult with all relevant parties including but not limited to clinicians, biomedical engineering staff, and facility safety engineering staff. The reason being they need to determine if the room should be considered to be a wet condition and or if there is a danger due to frequent spillages of fluids that could cause a breaker to trip or a short to ground could cause a shock. They need to determine if they can afford a breaker to trip during an operation or a shock to a patient under anesthesia. During many operations, the equipment is maintaining the life support of the patient. Can they afford to have the power cut off if the breaker trips due to power cords of the equipment laying in the fluid spilled on the floor? Once that is determined, a record should be kept with all names and responsibilities of the individuals that were on the risk assessment committee. It is recommended if you have both isolated power and grounded power operating rooms to post outside the door which rooms are considered wet procedure rooms as a reminder. In the state of North Carolina, all operating rooms, ICU, special procedure rooms, emergency rooms, and birthing rooms are considered to be a wet location and shall have isolated power. Number 4. Receptacles do not have correct polarity. This is common violation because a polarity checker does not work on isolated power. 
Since there is no neutral on isolated power the polarity checker will not work. Some think it does not matter because when they use the outlet, it will power up whatever is plugged into it. Code. 6.3.2.2.6.3 Polarity of receptacles. Each receptacle shall be wired in accordance with NFPA 70. To ensure correct polarity 517.160A5 conductor identification, isolated conductor number 1 is orange goes to silver screw of the receptacle. Isolated conductor number 2 is brown goes to brass screw of the receptacle. Solution. Verify correct color wire was used, orange and brown and on the circuit breaker panel the orange wire goes to circuit breaker lug number 1 and brown to lug number 2. Then it repeats all the way down on each breaker, orange then brown. Now that the circuit breakers have correct color code, check a wall receptacle. Orange goes to silver screw and brown to brass screw. Ground. Correct so all matches. You can also use a shorting wire from the large prong of the 15 amp receptacle or the plus prong of a 20 amp receptacle and short it to the receptacle ground prong. The line isolation monitor will alarm seeing that it has been shorted to ground, silence the limb. Now you can plug your polarity checker into all the receptacles on that isolated power panel. What one receptacle sees they all do. If your polarity checker shows up reverse polarity on one of the receptacles it does not match the receptacle you have shorted to ground. Correct so all matches. Number 3. Receptacles are not labeled with which breaker controls them. Code, NFPA 70, 408.4 Field Identification Required says, A, Circuit Directory or Circuit Identification. Every circuit and circuit modification shall be legibly identified as to its clear, evident, and specific purpose or use, located on the face, or placed inside of the panel door. Solution, use a more permanent labeling and keep current to changes in remodeling. Number 2. Circuit breaker panel board schedule is not filled out corresponding to what the breakers are controlling or is incorrectly filled out. Code, NFPA 70. 408.4 field identification required says a circuit directory or circuit identification every circuit and circuit modification shall be legibly identified as to its clear evident and specific purpose for use located on the face or placed inside of the panel door solution Schedule maintenance to verify which breaker is controlling what and start a new circuit breaker panel board schedule instead of using the same scratched up directory. Finally, number one. Placing carts or equipment in front of the circuit breaker panels. Code NFPA 70 110.26 A Working Space. Working space to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized shall comply with dimensions of Table 110.26A1. Says working space is 3 feet around the circuit breaker panel. Solution. Inform supervisors of that area that 3 feet space needs to be maintained. Place sign that says, no, objects can be placed within 3 feet of panel and or mark the floor, do not place any objects here. We hope this video was a help to you. We certainly understand that during a busy day things can be missed. So hopefully, this video will remind you of some of the things that might need attention. This video was compiled by Mr. Scott Brockman, President of Isolated Power Specialist. If you have any questions, please email them to Scott Brockman at scott at isolatedpowerspecialist.com or to me, Ron Smith at Ron's at isolatedpowerspecialist.com. Our website is isolatedpowerspecialist.com. We hope you have a very good day.